Hi everyone, and welcome back to another lesson in information technology. We will be continuing with our database lessons and we'll be looking at databases part eight, specifically calculated field queries. Today's objective, we'll be looking at how to create calculated field queries. We will be looking at how to do three queries in the same activity that we have been using since we began this series of videos. First, we'll be creating a query that says, create a query with a field called subtotal that calculates the amount to be paid by each customer. Then create a query that gives a 5% discount to customers with orders more than $60. And lastly, we will be creating a query that says, create a query that calculates each customer's total cost after the discount with orders more than $60. So this is a database that we have been working with from the beginning. It's called the Bookstore Database. And we're going to jump right in and start creating the calculated field queries. Now, just as a reminder, your calculated field queries are queries where there exists several fields and tables, but you desire to create a new field that requires some calculation for it to be derived. So your calculated field query is going to be a query that creates a new field that does, did not previously exist in the database, and it will be using fields from one or more tables for it to be generated. In our first query, we are asked to calculate the subtotal and we are asked to create a query that will calculate the subtotal. So let's get right into that. First thing we need to do is to click on the Create tab, then Query Design, and we are going to be adding three tables, the customer table, order table, and the product table. Then I'm going to close. I'm going to bring this over a little bit so you can all see better. I'm going to be adding customer ID from the customer table, last name and first name. Then I'm going to be adding the description and the cost from the product table then the quantity from the order table, okay? Um, because I'm going to be doing some additional queries, I'm going to add the order date because you're going to notice that one particular customer has more than one order and it will be better for you to be able to see that this customer actually made orders on several dates, different dates and not just that there is a repetition unnecessarily in the query. I'm going to move this field down by highlighting the entire field, right-clicking in the entire column and dragging it just between the first name and the description. So now here we go into doing the calculated field query. I'm going to adjust the size of the columns here to allow you to be able to see easily how the calculated field is going to look. So I widen the column that I'm going to use to create a calculated field so that it will have enough space for me to type the formula. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to type the name of the new field in all particular question. The new field was called subtotal. And that is what I'm going to type here. I'm not gonna put any space in between the field name. You could if you wanted, but I'm gonna choose not to. So I'm gonna type subtotal as one and I'm using I'm toggling between capital letters and uppercase, lowercase letters. Then after you've typed the new field name, you're going to type the colon. That will be equivalent to your equal sign. Then I'm going to be using the field that I need now to do the calculation. In order to find a subtotal, we need to multiply cost by a quantity. So whenever we're typing field names, that, that are already existing in tables in Microsoft Access, we must enclose them in square bracket. So I have opened a square bracket and I'm going to type in cost 
please remember that we type the fields exactly as they appear in the table. So in this case, my cost starts with a capital C. And so I do the same thing. I do not deviate from what is in the tables. And I'm going to put a multiplication sign, which in that case, we use the asterisk. And then the next field, which is the quantity, open the square bracket again and type QTY exactly as it appears in the table. Close the square bracket. And then um, you notice when I deselect the area that I was working in just now, the show box underneath this new field is ticked. If it wasn't ticked, then you'll go ahead and tick it because obviously you need to see it in the result. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the query. And this is the query now. This is the new query. It shows you all of who, persons who bought things, the cost and the quantity. And if you look across, you realize that the calculations are correct. We're going to save this query, right click on the name of the query, save, and we're going to call it subtotal query. And then click OK. And that is the end of this query. We're going to go ahead now. I'm going to right click and close this. Then other, other two queries will be using the query before it. So this one now that says create a query that gives a 5% discount to customers with orders more than $60 will be making use of the subtotal query. We're on now to our second query and we're going to go straight into our database. Same process, create query design. This time, we're not gonna be taking anything from the tables tab. We're gonna be going to the queries tab and we're going to select the query that we just used or created. And we're gonna click add and close the show table dialog box. I'm going to add all the fields. I am double clicking for those of you who may be watching this and have not watched the previous videos. This will add all the fields to the grid. Our new field is going to be a calculated field again, and it's a calculated field with additional details because in this calculated field query, we have a criteria. So I'm just adjusting the column width to give me some more space. Just in my window. This query is called discount. So, as with the previous one, we type in the new name of the new field followed by a colon. Then I'm going to incorporate the field that I need to use to do this calculation. We are going to be using the subtotal field which we just created. So I'm going to type that and close it. When we are using percentages in databases, we have to convert those percentages to decimal. And so if I want to find 5% of the subtotal to calculate the discount, then 5% will be 5 over 100, which works out to 0.05. I'm going to now multiply this subtotal by 0.05. And I am going to check the box. But the other thing I need to do is to put in my criteria because we were told the only one for persons who got orders over $60. So I put greater than 60 under the subtotal. I'm going to run the query first and then come back to show you something um, so that you can see the difference. Run this query. And here it shows you only four persons, whereas in the previous query, you would have seen One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out of the eight orders, only four orders would have qualified for the discount. So I'm gonna close by this one. And I'm gonna go back to the design view for this square that we just did a while ago. You will notice this column, the discount column doesn't have any dollar sign on it. I'm going to show you how you can get the dollar sign on that. We right click on the discount column and we click on properties from the pop-up menu in the 
property sheet, there's a table. We go to where it says format. In the set column, we said that we drop that down, select currency. And for the decimal places, we drop that down again, and we select two. And I'm going to run the query again for you to see the difference. And there is a difference. All right. So I'm going to save this query as discount query and click OK. Our third query now says create a query that calculates each customer's total cost after discount with orders greater than $60 or more than $60. So as I said previously, we're using the previous query to help us to create the next one. So I'm going to close this. Of course, you didn't have to include all of these fields, but I'm just keeping them as they are. I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new query. Click create query design. And I'm going to add the previous query that was created, which would have been the discount query. And I'm going to close. And I'm going to go ahead. And this time I'm not going to add the customer ID. I really just want the first name, last name, order date, description. And I want the subtotal discount. And then I'm going to create a new field. I'm going to close this property sheet box. And our new field is going to be total cost. All right, I'm going to wind this so that we can get a chance to see a little bit better. And our total cost, after we've typed the field name followed by the colon, put in the subtotal, because that is how it will be done, minus discount. And you will recall when you go to the store, it's the same procedure that is used. And we put in our criteria. And our query is complete, so we just need to run it. And if you look and you do the individual calculations yourself, you'll recognize that the calculations are correct. And you right click, and I'm going to save, and I'm going to call this one total cost. And there we have it. These are our calculated field queries. Now this marks the end of our lesson on calculated field queries. I want to thank you for stopping by the IT Hub. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, if you found it useful, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for more awesome videos so that you'll be one of the first persons to know when more videos have been created. And also, like the video. Give it a nice big thumbs up and share the video with your friends.